Uh, Ryan, we do AEW first. Yes. Right? Okay. So the good show. Uh, reviews in the opposite order I watched them. Uh, we watched AEW Dynamite Anniversary, which would be October sixth, twenty twenty one. We had the we had the ground running. There is no show rundown, no big pyro, no uh, entrances for the guys. There's eight dudes in the ring. Justin Roberts introduces them and gets the hell out of the way. And God bless him for doing that because we got the super elite of the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, and Adam Cole versus the Jurassic Express and Christian Cage and Brian Danielson. And they had a great wrestling match. Now, before we get to the match, I want to say one thing, and it's one of those deals where... If you if you watch WWE, you have to watch WWE as WWE, and you have to watch AEW as AEW. And oh. apologies, <sighs> I've I muted my machine. Oh, Brian, you made you're a great point just now. About watching to, AEW to, as AEW, you spout some wisdom, and you're watching a fucking movie or something. Well, it, it, okay, I'll tell you what happened. I had the ESPN box score up, and ESPN has this annoying thing where you're looking at a page and it's fine, and like two minutes later, an ad will start playing. That is what happened. That's what happened. Uh, is there any there. chance you could ch- shut the box scores down for the next hour? It was instead ba- of curiosity. I, was, it was, I had it open five minutes ago before we started. I see. It was a back. It's, so it's in an extra. It's a sideways tab, and it does this. Yes. God damn it, ESPN. Fuck me. Anyway, so in WWE, if uh, if you just open the show and there's just some guys in the ring, it's like all jobbers. No one got an entrance. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Well, on this show. Trust me, these weren't jobbers. No. When I watch this show, if if they come back from a break and dudes are just in the ring, you know what that means to me? That means we're trying to save some time so we can show you more wrestling. Yes. And I don't know how long this match went, like 16, 17 minutes. About that. No commercials. Nope. And uh, I don't need to see no fucking entrance. Like, I don't want this match six minutes shorter so I can see everyone get their fucking entrance. I was pleased that they just put everybody in the ring and rang the bell and they got to go nutty. Yeah, and they you, went nutty. If you like entrances and don't like wrestling, you should watch NXT. Maybe you're the audience. Yeah, because they will do. Maybe a th- you're 62. They will do a three minute entrance for one minute of wrestling. So enjoy. So it's just an awesome tag match. Jungle Boy is just the best babyface in peril, and uh, he gets, makes the hot tag to American Dragon. And and I know it's, it's Brian Danielson, but he's wrestling so differently. I, I I call him American Dragon throughout my notes. It's a different wrestler. Than we saw in World Wrestling Entertainment. Yeah, it is because he's a wrestler now, and he was a sports entertainer then, and that's what he says. Yes, that's that's his yes. line, not mine. So don't get but mad even, at me. But even even uh, even compared to the Brian Danielson we've seen before, like this is a Brian Danielson that has been through some shit. He, uh, he he's not in the learning and growing phase anymore. He's the best in the world, and he knows it, and he will kill you to prove it. Well, he was also a sports entertainer for over a decade. And the the actual wrestling business, I'm not talking about the sports entertainment business, but the wrestling business, New Japan, Ring of Honor, AEW now, the indies, it changed dramatically over the last 10 years. And he watched all of it. And so there's a lot of things that he's interested in trying yes. and doing, yes. and he's getting a chance to do it all now. So he looks great, and Jungle Boy looks great, and Luchasaurus looks great, and there's a big parade of dives. And the payoff to the parade of dive spot is Adam Cole teasing a dive throwing on the brakes in the middle of the ring and stopping to turn to the hard cam and shout his own name and the words Bebe. It caught me off guard, but these fans are totally prepared. I just watched this entire match with a giant smile on my face. Well, that one and the other one where where uh, the Bucks hit the ropes eight times only to stop and kiss him. Well, that one I saw coming. Yes, but they, they both of them are fantastic. They, they do that every match, but the, the, the double kiss spot and Adam Cole's glee about being kissed by two men. How happy that makes him. That's wonderful. You know what I love about Adam Cole, by the way? Everything? Well, I mean, yeah. He's he's uh, he's 5'8". Okay. I don't want any arguments. I talked to him at All Out. He's 5'8". And I don't know what he weighs, but what, 160? 165? Oh, somewhere around there? Fair, yeah. So anyway, he is he is he literally is every high flyer in this business, except he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't do any of that. Like, the most high-flying thing that he does is the Panama Sunrise, which actually is jumping off the middle rope and landing on his feet. Yes. And then the other guy does a backflip. Right. So it's just incredible that a guy his size could be so awesome, and he doesn't do anything that every other guy his size in the whole entire business pretty much does. So he's great. So 
Even Danielson does like topes and yeah. high flying spots. He does the he still does the kick of the corner where like he does it's a kick and he flips backwards and lands on his feet. He does that one still. So everyone's running wild. There's one four way power bomb spot that they tried on Luchasaurus that went wrong, but they're heels. Who cares? They they screwed up a move. It's not like everyone time froze and they stared at each other and they didn't know what to do. They screwed up this move. Everyone booed and they looked at the crowd and said, "Yeah, now you're booing us." Yeah, awesome. they laughed. Yeah. Like, who gives a fuck? We don't care if we botched a spot. Yeah, we still dropped the dinosaur. Yeah. So the dragon returns to the ring, tears up four men at once. It's awesome. But finally, Omega catches one of his kicks. The other three dudes all triple super kick the dragon, and Jungle Boy is quadruple being the elite triggered and pinned. This match ruled. It was awesome. I, I watched the whole thing with like a smile on my face. And at some points, I just started to laugh because of how great it was. Yeah, this was something else. You know, the other thing that's, that's so great about, about being a heel is it's because of things like that, you can fuck up, and it's fine because you're a heel. When you're a baby face, especially nowadays, it, the, the, the death of a baby face is being a geek. Mm-hmm. And boy, I mean, especially like in WWE... But less so in AEW, but I mean, there's still things that happen. I mean, if the baby faces would have all fucked this up, they would have looked like geeks. You can't look like a geek if you want to remain a strong baby face. But when you're a heel, you can in fact look like a geek. It is okay for the fans to boo you because you fucked something up because you're a heel. But it's death for a baby face. I'm not advocating heels fuck a bunch of shit up, but... It's, it's easier to fuck something up as a heel than a baby face. Tonight on Dynamite, Sammy Guevara defends the TNT title against Bobby Fish. Yes, that, Bobby Fish. I should put over, by the way, uh, Nick Jackson, who saved the life of the Jungle Boy. Okay. Jungle Boy went for a running Hurricane Rana off the apron to the floor. <laughs> yes. And uh, he totally mistimed it. And uh, he was going to his death. And at the last second, Nick grabbed his legs to make sure that he rotated. And, uh, and over he went. And there was one other one with Jungle Boy as well, but I can't remember what it was. There was another really scary thing. Oh, you know what it was? It was actually another Nick Jackson thing. It wasn't Jungle Boy. So uh, there was a spot in the ring, and I can't remember who it was, but basically Nick Jackson had to come off the top with a senton to break it up. And uh, they did this spot. It was the uh, cattle mutilation. Cattle mutilation. Yeah. So so Dale Bryan's in a bridge. Brian Danielson's in a bridge. Yeah. They're dead center in the middle of the ring. And so this was where Matt Farmer was, by the way. <laughs> the last time you ever compare Matt Farmer to Brian Danielson. So Nick Jackson has to break it up with a senton. Mm-hmm. But not only does he have to do the longest jump in the history of recorded pro wrestling to hit this move, but Danielson is also in a bridge. Yes. So it's even more difficult. <laughs> And somehow he managed to pull it off. And yes. I don't even know how. It was like a magic trick. Yes. But he he got it. Nobody died. And he saved Jungle Boy. So he's really the MVP of this match. I, I was thinking about that. Like, if their timing is off or his aim is off, he lands on Danielson's neck and breaks it. Like, <laughs> There were a lot of bad things that could have gone wrong. Yes. Yeah. So it didn't. Nothing went wrong. Match was awesome. Stop listening to the show. Go watch it if you haven't seen it. In fact, if you have seen it, go back and watch it again. And by the way, the other thing was that uh, Jungle Boy got pinned again. And not only did he get pinned again, but uh, they hit the four-way BTE trigger. And then Adam Cole made the cover. Mm. So now Adam Cole has beaten this guy twice. First, he beat him with a low blow. Now he beat him after all four guys quadruple team the guy. Indeed. So it's it's like it's inevitable to me. That at some point soon, maybe it'll even be at the pay per view. Mm-hmm. Jungle Boy is going to pin Adam Cole, and it's going to be fucking amazing. So you heard it, not here first, but they may have. That's what's going to happen. Hey Brian, you remember the story where Canyon called you from the locker room and asked you if somebody was Fritz past? Yes, yeah, Fritz. Canyon calls me and he goes, Alvarez. He always called me Alvarez. Alvarez, I, I'm having an argument right here. Fritz von Erich, alive or dead? And I said, I hope you get your money. It is not on speakerphone. He was just on his. And I said, I hope you get your money, but uh, he's dead. There's a pause, and then I hear, I told you he was alive! And he hung up. (laughs) If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, 
you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.